Dow Jones stock average dipped under 4,000 points today. You see it in the stock, the stock market's market volatility. It's violent wealth loss. It's bad for the rich people. Can you imagine how bad it is for me and you? Good evening, America. I'm Jay Knight. Our nation is slipping deeper and deeper into a crisis never seen before. Oil and gas shortages have crippled manufacturing and transportation across... While conflicts in the Mideast have virtually cut off all oil imports to the United States. What are you saying? Are, are you saying that the American people aren't taking care of their own country? Global States Oil Corporation suffered yet another major spill off the Gulf Coast. We're seeing an unprecedented, totally okay. unexpected And as a result, collapse. rail travel has re-emerged as the only affordable means of freight and passenger transportation. Speaker, we would like to propose a bill to make it illegal to fire employees from profitable corporations. Our government has put a moratorium on all wage increases and recently passed the Fair Price Bill, restricting increases in the price of most goods and services. This is your wake-up call, America. Another government relief ship was hijacked late last night by pirate Ragnar Danishkul. Violence and crime are skyrocketing to the in the manual. Good evening, and welcome to the Jay Knight Hour. My guests tonight are James Taggart, CEO of Taggart Transcontinental Railroad, Wesley Mouch, a noted Washington lobbyist from the Philadelphia law firm Young, Stevens & Sachs, and Ellis Wyatt, the oil and gas entrepreneur who is responsible for the current economic boom in Colorado. My first question is to Mr. Taggart. Sir, your company is one of the few managing to survive in our current economic downturn, yet there have been dozens of derailments on your lines in the last year alone. How do you explain that? With any growth, there can be growing pains. People shouldn't have to worry about how they're going to get where they need to go. We must act to benefit society as a whole. People aren't going to be going anywhere without oil. That means the railroads like Mr. Taggart's need to be fixing their railways here instead of adding Can new ones something? like those in Mexico. Can I get a cup of coffee? And he makes a very good point, Mr. Taggart. Do you have any money? Our motto is for I got plenty of money. And Taggart Transcontinental is committed to sharing the burden in these tough Hey, what happened to you? Expanding our lines into more and more territories. Who's John Go? We don't need more rail lines. We just need the ones we have to be reliable. Mr. Mouch, let me ask you, what can the government do to help turn things around? Well, prices are too high. We have a nation in crisis. Every business must lend a helping hand, Mr. Wyatt. Gasoline prices are 37.50 a gallon. The Mideast has imploded, creating a worldwide oil shortage. We have plenty of oil right here in the U.S. Oh, joy. Because of political shenanigans in the backroom field, One slice of cherry pie, as usual. The problem now is reliable transportation. And Taggart Transcontinental is providing Wyatt Oil excellent rail transportation in order to get his oil to the people. Your Rio Norte line is so incompetent that I've had to switch to the Phoenix Durango. Yes, after years of excellent service from us. From your father. Since you've taken the reins, that company General, has gone Gentlemen, gentlemen let's, let's stay on top of the base price. I've caused consumers to be less reliant on trucks. Stay dry now. They have gone to the railroads for the benefits that they provide. People can't count on companies like Taggart Transcontinental to deliver. Midas Mulligan. Who's asking? Someone who knows what it's like to work for himself and not let others feed off the profits of his energy. It's funny. Exactly what I've been thinking. We're like you and I. Who are you? Eddie. What? No, I, 
Hold on, hold on. The Dow Jones stock average dipped under 4,000 points today. This is the deepest one day drop. No, we've not seen yet. I'm trying another channel. Simply one of the worst railroad accidents in recent history. A Taggart transcontinental freight train has crashed and derailed in Colorado's Rocky Mountain region. Early reports are putting much of the blame on the poor condition of the 100 year old railroad line. This rail disaster could delay eastbound oil shipments by at least two weeks. The accident is yet another downturn for Taggart Transcontinental, the largest railroad remaining in the U.S. I'm on my way in. know about the derailments on the Rio Norte line, Eddie. These are the cancellations. People are giving up trying to use the line. Their business is going to the Phoenix Durango. I have new steel rails coming from Orem That order is 13 months old. The Phoenix Durango has cut deeply into our shipping business. They now expect to have Wyatt Oil as their main account. He needs us as much as we need him. Ellis Wyatt has put Taggart Transcontinental on notice. He'd rather backlog, for Christ's sake, with any competitor than ship anything Wyatt's more a with... greedy bastard. You know, we've been serving the Colorado region since my great-great-grandfather ran this company. What happened to loyalty, Eddie? Perhaps the problem is we haven't updated that branch since your father ran the company. Are you accusing me of not doing my job? Be careful, Eddie. There's one thing I learned from my father. Everyone's expendable. Let me be very clear, James. Colorado is our last hope. If we don't do something about it, there's not going to be a railroad. I'm still the president of this company, regardless of my sister. Morning. Eddie, can you give us a minute? I need to have a conversation with my brother. A meeting without your right-hand man. It must be real important. I've ordered the replacement rails for the Rio Norte line from Reardon Steel. I have a contract with Oren Boyle. You had a contract with Oren Boyle. I canceled it. You have no authority. As much authority as you had to do a backdoor deal with Oren Boyle. There are consequences to this accident, Jim. We have to service Ellis Wyatt. He is this company's main priority. You just love to keep feeding the monopolies, if don't you? If you keep pissing off the heart of this operation, Wyatt is going to stop providing the blood we need to keep this company alive. Do you understand that? Why well, go with Reardon Steel when there are smaller companies that actually need the money? It's just new metal. That metal's completely untested. The consensus of the best metallurgical authorities are highly skeptical. I'm not interested in their opinions. Then who's you go by? My own. <laughs> what on earth do you know about Reardon Metal? It is tougher, cheaper, lighter than steel, and will outlast any hunk of metal in existence. Says who? I studied engineering in college, Jim. When I see things, I see them. Well, what do you see? Reardon's plans and the research he's done. This is the greatest metal on the market. Dagny, nobody's used Reardon Metal. We will. Why do we have to be the first? Do you want to save Colorado or not? I'm not taking responsibility for any of this. You don't have to take responsibility, Jim. I will. Just know that this is the consequence of your policies. Which policies? Your 13-month experiment with Oren Boyle, for one. The Mexican catastrophe, for another. The bottom line is that we were going to fix the Rio Norte line with Reardon Metal. I'm going to Philadelphia tonight to finalize the deal with Hank Reardon. You're lucky. What? Other people are human. They're sensitive. They can't just dedicate their whole lives to metals and engines. You've never had any feelings. I don't think you've ever felt a thing. No, Jim. I guess I've never felt anything at all.
very nice. Gwen, it's beautiful. You have more messages, Mr. Reardon. National Council of Metal Industries. File it. The State Science Institute. File it. United Metal Workers Guild. <laughs> Your last appointment of the day is here. Miss Taggart, he'll see you now. Mr. Reardon. Miss Taggart, if you're here for your rails, they won't be tempered and cooled for a few days. I'm just here to discuss our deal. Please sit. So, what's the premium to rush these rails? $40,000 a ton. And that's the best price that you can give me? I could charge you double and you'd pay. You could, and I would. But you won't. Why won't I? You need to have the Rio Norte re-railed with your new metal because it'll be its first showcase. And I'm gambling your new metal can do what you say it can. I'm staking my business on it. I know what you mean. Like I said, we need each other. So, if you can have the Rio Norte completely re-railed in nine months, I will give you 20,000 a ton. Deal. I'm curious. Is it all right with you that I'm squeezing every penny of profit I can from your emergency? I have to get the Rio Norte completely re-railed in nine months or Tiger Transcontinental will crash. They're doing their best to make it harder for you, aren't they? Yes, but it's useless to get angry with people like my brother and his friends in Washington. I don't have time for it. I have to undo what they've done. And after? After they won't matter anyway. I was just heading out myself. Can I walk you to your car? Do you need a ride? No, thank you. I walk home most nights. Mm. Gives me a chance to think. Well, I hope that doesn't catch on. You put me out of business. If your new metal works, have you thought of the implications? Yeah. The uses are almost endless. Naval ships, armor plating, even spacecraft. Can you imagine a commercial jet twice the size with half the weight? Commercial airlines. You really do want to put me out of business, huh? There was like I love 20 people in front of me, right? I can't believe I did this. And th well, who's finally home? Henry, Paul's been waiting here for hours. Hello, Henry. Hey, Paul. I know. I'm late. Could have called. Henry, do you mind holding the 10th of December open for me? That's three months away. I don't know what I'm doing next week. We started a major new pour today. Oh, Jim. It's our wedding anniversary, Henry. December 10th. Henry isn't interested in anything that doesn't tie in to his work. I know that you are very busy, but I would very much like for you to be there. Of course, Lily, and I'll be there. Thank you, dear. I want it to be special. Everyone will be there. Have you had any dinner, Henry? No, I was busy working. But I'm not hungry anymore. That's the trouble with you. You work too hard. Mm. Ooh, what is this? I had it made from the first pour of Reardon metal. You giving me a railroad spark? It's wonderful. It is. It's 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 original. I'll be the toast of the town, wearing a piece of the same metal used to build railroads and bridges and, and sewer pipes and oil tanks and you were so selfish, Henry. No, Philip, it is not the gift, it's the intention. The intention is pure selfishness, it seems to me. I mean, another man would have given his wife a diamond bracelet if he wanted to give her a gift for her pleasure, not his. No, a uh, chain is appropriate. I think it's the chain by which he holds us all in bondage. 
Henry's poured his medal today, and I have the first trophy. It's sweet. It's pathetic, Chloe. Thank you. Thank you. Henry? Philip? What are you doing with yourself these days? I'm working for Friends of Global Awareness. I know them. What do you want? Money. Doesn't everyone? Call my office first thing in the morning. I'll authorize a hundred grand for you. You really don't care about helping the underprivileged, do you? No, Philip, I don't. But it'll make you happy. Well, it's not for me, Hank. It's for the benefit of the less privileged. Do you think I can have the money wired to my account? A wire? Why? Well, the thing is, it's a progressive group. They wouldn't appreciate your name on a check. You're kidding me. It would embarrass us to have you on a list of our contributors. You shouldn't have given Philip that money. By the way, I don't care what the industry says, Henry, Reardon Metal, it's terrific. I just hope you don't run into any trouble. What trouble? Well, you're not very popular, Hank. Well, I haven't heard any complaints from my customers. Yeah, that's not what I mean. You know what you should do? You ought to get yourself a, a good press agent to sell you to the public. It's my metal I'm selling, not me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But you don't want the public against you. Public opinion, eh, you know, it can mean a lot. As far as I can tell, it doesn't mean a damn thing one way or another. The press is against you? They have time to waste. I don't. Well, they say you're intractable, you're ruthless, your only goal is to make money. My only goal is to make money. Yeah, but you shouldn't say it. Hank, I'm on your side. How's your band in Washington? Wesley Mouch. He's fine, I suppose. Good. It's important that your man in Washington is fine. What are you trying to imply, Paul? Is there something going on that I should know about? No. It's nothing. It's just you don't know who's loyal these days. What is wrong with the world, Paul? Well, I ask useless questions. How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? Who is John Galt? Henry Reardon claims that his steel is lighter than even the cheapest brands, but it's 10 times stronger. This is physically impossible, Jim. You're inviting disaster if you use it. Dagny is not me. Well, something has to be done. Agreed. I believe you know Wesley Mount, or in Britain's man in Washington. You know what I like about you, Wesley? You're a one-word man. True. All right, something has got to be done about the iron ore shortage. It threatens the very existence of the steel industry, and I don't think it's fair that one company has its own supply. Britain steel. Exactly. It's not in the public interest to let one man destroy an entire industry. If we're going to bring Britain down, we should do it from the inside. To my guidance, of course. The National Council of Metal Industries has completed a report that draws public opinion against Reardon Metal. Excuse me, Reardon I just want to make sure that Hank started. doesn't get hurt. Paul, it's his own fault. He's not exactly open to competition. A monopoly, to be exact. We are working on a bill. It's called the Equalization of Opportunity. It proposes to limit the number of businesses that any one person owns to one business. However, we're going to need your help, Screw Jimmy. We need you to grease the palms of your politicians in order to get the legislation we're spearheading passed. And what will Tiger Transcontinental get in return? I can see to it that the exclusive grip that Dan Conway's Phoenix Durango Railroad has in Colorado can come to a halt. Paul, this is not personal. Everybody needs to share the burdens we face, especially Britain. Isn't that Francisco Dancona? That's him. He's still throwing away his daddy's money. Did you get in on that online deal in Mexico? We all did. He may be a slacker, but he makes business investments that pay off. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for me, gentlemen. 
I have to go to uh, Mr. Taggart, Warren. Uh, Paul, uh, maybe uh, you'd like to lift in my limo. Of course. Thank you. Please. This gentleman. Good night, Paul. Warren. Wesley. Jim, what is it? Well, if he's such a great businessman, then why hasn't a single train filled with oil left Mexico yet? Isn't that what we invested in? Dan Kearney has invested billions developing their infrastructure, but he also bought in himself. He must know something. What do you think? I think it's the ore reserves. I think they must be huge. Well, the success of my Mexican expansion depends on those mines, Oren. This time next year, Phoenix Durango needs to be a memory. Thank you, Mr. McNamara. I look forward to working with you as well. Frankly, I appreciate working directly with you. My pleasure. Goodbye. Bye. Who's that? I found an excellent contractor to take over the rebuilding of the Rio Norte line. That was quick. Now, you'd be surprised how quickly things get done when you do some actual work and don't rely on political favors. Is this accurate? Just one passenger train per day on the Mexican line? And one freight every other night? Yes. Well, how are the Mexicans gonna develop the area with a single passenger train once a day? They're not, Jim. You should know I moved everything of value out of Mexico a month ago. There's nothing there for the looters once the Mexicans nationalize. You know, that Mexican line was helping those destitute people get back in the game. And it was great PR for this company. I would have happily put a railroad in Mexico if there was a reason to build up the region. I. I didn't see one. You can't just take everything away from people who need our help. Move. Okay. Miss Taggart? Oh, hello, Owen, please. Have a seat. Thank you. Um I've come to give you my resignation, effective immediately. Why? For a personal reason. Are you dissatisfied here? No. Have you received a better offer? No. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Are you ill? No. Are you leaving the city? No. But you no longer wish to work for Taggart Transcontinental? Miss Taggart, I assure you, um, no person, matter, or event connected to my job has anything to do with my decision to leave. I actually called you in here today to offer you a promotion. I wanted you to manage the Rio Norte line. That's, that's, that's very... Very kind of you, Miss Taggart, but, um, my decision has been made. I'll double what any other railroad is offering. I won't be working for any railroad. But you will be working. Yes, um, look, I, I came to tell you I'm leaving because I promised you once that I would, and I want to keep my word. Write your own ticket, Owen. Name your price. I want you to stay. I'm sorry, Miss Taggart. So there's nothing I can offer you? Nothing. Nothing on earth. I'm sorry, Owen. I have to ask, and I'd like the truth. Why are you leaving? Who is John Gold? All done then? Where are you going? I have some work to do. Fix me a drink? Of course. Am I calling too late? Not at all. What's going on? Nothing. Well, um, something. I don't know why I thought of calling you. 
It's fine, Dagny. What happened? One of my best employees quit today. Owen Kellogg. I was actually grooming him for a management position, and he just up and left. He couldn't even tell me why. He just said, who is John Galt? Why are so many great men disappearing? It's going to be OK, Dagny. You no, know, when you say that, I actually believe it. Dagny, what we're doing, my metal, your railway, it's us who move the world. And it's us who will pull it through. I know. Good night. Good night. Richard McNamara? I'm McNamara. Are you here from Taggart Transcontinental? No, I'm not. What are you selling, pal? Nothing. I'm simply offering a society that cultivates individual achievement. I know where such a place exists. We say its purpose is to prevent destructive competition between railroads. We build public opinion against encroachment on existing train routes, and then... And then the National Alliance of Railroads proposes a rule. The anti-doggy dog rule. Every member must subordinate his own interests for the collective needs of the railroad industry. But in fact, we're squeezing Dan Conway out of Colorado. You are thinking like a politician, Jimmy. Mexican authorities seized land throughout the country today. Most affected were the San Sebastian Mines, where international playboy Francisco Danconia and several other investors, including Taggart Transcontinental and Associated Steel, have reportedly lost billions. The San Sebastian line has been seized by the Mexican government. It's been nationalized, as Dagny predicted. An emergency board meeting has been called. I can assure you that there is no need for panic. And I have full confidence that our government will negotiate an equitable settlement with the government of Mexico. I foresaw the possibility of this type of event and took every precaution to protect the interests of Taggart Transcontinental. Several months ago, I ordered operations to cut the schedule on the San Sebastian Line down to a single train a day and to remove everything of value from Mexico. And because of my actions, billions of company dollars have been saved. No, this is no trick. I checked it all out, Jimmy. Dan Conio used his own cash, and now he's lost it all in those mines. He's too smart for that. He must have something up his sleeve. Well, let's hope so. Well, what do your friends in Washington think? They don't know anything. Yeah, you know, well, he knows something. And we need to find out what it is and be sure to get in on it, too. Ruth Ann, why haven't you got me a meeting with Francisco Dan Conio yet? I wasn't able to get a meeting. Why not? Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's something else, Dagny. There was a call just now from the Rio Norte branch in Colorado. Richard McNamara never showed up for work. We'll go find him. And we looked. And we found a note. What did it say? It said, who is John Galt? What does that mean? Okay, it was explained to me once. Don't ask questions nobody could answer. Can you get Hank Ridden on the phone for me? He actually called earlier. He's in town and he wants to know if you're available. And what did you say? He's meeting at 4.30. Thanks, Eddie. We need to talk. You guys carry on. I'll catch up. You think I've ruined this company. Do you and Orrin Boyle have a plan for making up for the Mexican Lions losses? Yes, I do. The anti-doggy dog rule. Why we'll have to use Tiger Transcontinental to ship his oil, because it will be the only railroad in town. The Phoenix Durango is a good line, Jim. 
Dan Conway put his lifeblood into its success. Well, sometimes you have to take radical steps to survive. And what does that mean? Why don't you go and see your old boyfriend, Francisco, and find out why he screwed us out of billions of dollars? It'll never happen. You'll never open those old wounds. Get me Dan Conway. I'm Ellis Wyatt. How can I help you? I'll make this quick. I came here today because, well, I met your brother and I was hoping that someone in this business still had a brain. If you and your brother try to undermine me or go to the government like you did to destroy my best friend, Dan Conway. Maybe you should let me explain what happened. Maybe you should let me finish speaking. Okay. Dagny? Now that you have effectively closed down the Phoenix-Durango railroad line because of this new anti-dog-eat-dog bullshit, I have no choice but to get back into business with you Taggarts again. I had nothing to do with the creation of that bill. I will not lower my business standards to your lousy level of incompetence. Shall I explain what I intend to do in Colorado? No. Now that I'm forced to use your railroad, all I want from you is dependable transportation. You will get the transportation you need, Mr. Wyatt. I promise you that. We'll see. Is everything all right, Dagny? I don't know. Eddie. Yes, Dagny. Can you get me a dinner appointment with Francisco de Acuna? What about Henry Reardon? I guess I have two dinner dates then. But in the end, he's right if Wyatt fails in Tiger Transcontinental and everyone else around him goes down. I have 50 miles of my new rail, tempered and ready to roll. And with your new rail, I can triple my load capacity, but I need more diesel engines. I, I barely have enough parts to keep the ones I have working now. Mm. Engine parts are hard to come by these days. I have engines I ordered two years ago and still have not received. There was a company made terrific engines years ago uh, in Wisconsin, I think. Closed suddenly, but they might have machine tools and parts lying around that you can use. I can look into it if you like. There is so much at stake. We have to make it. Did you get Lillian's invitation to our anniversary party? I did. Thank you. I can't speak for James, but I will be there. Good. Did you hear about Richard McNamara? I did. Can you imagine what will happen if this trend continues? Who will be left to keep things running? Oh, your brother and his friends in Washington people like that. That's depressing. I have to go. <laughs> Woo! That was refreshing. If you came here in order to remind me how lovely you are, well done. San Sebastian, you did it cold-bloodedly and with full intention. Wine, please? No. Right yes. away, sir. What is it exactly that you say I did with full intention? You knew intention? those mines were worthless. Why did I invest? Can you think of a motive that would prompt me to do it? You knew that they were going to seize those mines sooner or later, didn't you? What you were after were your American stockholders. That's true. That's part of the truth. And what is the rest of the truth? It's for you to figure out. And here you are, sir. <laughs> I came here today because I want you to know I'm beginning to understand your motives. If you did, you wouldn't have come. You get a thrill from swindling people like Jim and his friends in order to watch them squirm. They certainly provided a spectacle on a grand scale, especially your brother. 
He trusted your name and your honor. They did. They did. I'm aware of that. Do you find this amusing? Not at all. Your brother and his friends know nothing of the copper mine industries. They consider knowledge to be superfluous. So you did betray them intentionally? It's for you to decide. They rode on my brain and on the premise that I wanted to make money. What happened to you, Francisco? Where is the man that I used to love? You'll figure it out in time. Just answer the question, please. Who's John Galt? Happy anniversary. I know you're famous for skulking in corners, but be sociable tonight for once, please. For me. The Equalization of Opportunity Bill is set to appear before Congress next week. The bill, in an effort to control big business monopolies, proposes to limit the number of businesses any one person can own to one. Lawmakers feel the bill will help restabilize Wesley the Mouch, please. economy. Hank Reardon. Still have no leads on the mysterious disappearance of Midas Mulligan. He's not. A banker by trade, Michael no. Mulligan No, have him call me back. Name to Midas after his critics Can I have with one night? The cynical king life. This week, gas prices reached a historic high. And here you are, Mr. Reardon. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Oh, Where are you going? Pardon us, pal. Henry, dear, try to have fun. Well, how could I possibly have more fun than this, Lillian? You're really a wretched liar, aren't you? Behave. Mother, I love you. Mwah. Hello, Congratulations. Hello. Very happy. Pardon me one moment. Hello, James oh, yeah. Taggart. Mwah. A little late and a lot gorgeous. And Dagny. Mrs. Reardon, how are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Tell me, who are you wearing? Oh. Lenin Couture. I have often oh. said he's someone who should come back into fashion, and here you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a beautiful bracelet. Yeah, well, you know, Henry had that made for me from his new medal. He, he tries, poor thing. Now, come, there's some gentlemen who wants desperately to meet you. Here he is, as promised. James. Drink to that. Glad you could make it. Pardon me. Honey, uh, there's someone I want you to meet. Excuse us. You know, you're gonna have to post photos later. No. You promise. You will do it. I own you to do it. I'm having a magnificent time. Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> Are you glad? Here. Okay. What the hell is he doing here? Oh, you can't have a party without inviting Senor Danconia if he's around. You keep him away from me. I mean it. Grow up, Henry. Francisco! Pardon. You grow Good to see you. Two. Did you hear? Ralph Eubank is here. Good. He said happiness is a delusion of those whose emotions are superficial. That's a genius. Who are you? I'm, I'm Philip Reardon.
Congratulations on your 10th anniversary. Yeah. Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Hit it. Reputation precedes you, Senor Danconia. I'm not a fan. Then I'll be brief. I came here tonight just to meet you. And what did you want to meet me for? Help me lose money? I don't want to sell anything to you, Mr. Reardon. As a matter of fact, I didn't try to sell the copper mine to James Taggart either. He came to me. You wouldn't have. Exactly. So what do you want? I want to learn to understand you. <laughs> <laughs> what for? If it wasn't for you, most of these people would be left helpless. Why are you willing to carry them? Because they're a bunch of miserable children trying to stay alive. Desperately and very badly. Have you told them? Told them what? That you're working for your sake, not theirs. I know. Yes, they do, but they don't think you do. And what do I care what they think? Because it's a battle. A battle in which one must make one stand clear. What battle? I don't fight the disarmed. Well, they have a weapon against you. It's their only weapon, but it's a terrible one. Ask yourself what it is sometime. There's a reason you're as unhappy as you are. What exactly is your motive here? Let us say to give you the words you need for the time when you'll need them. It was a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Reardon. Good evening. Are you having a good time, Dagny? I am. Good. I really do love that bracelet. Uh, I would throw it into the fire if I thought it would burn. Perhaps I can take it off your hands. Are you serious? I, I was planning on giving it to the maid for her birthday. Maybe the maid would like this instead. That's enough, Lillian. Dagny's just being kind. Oh, it's okay. I mean, be quiet. Dagny and I are having a negotiation, it seems. You were saying. A simple trade. <laughs> that bracelet for this necklace. Sorry, Hank, I had to. No, you didn't. Yes, I did, and we both know why. It's nothing, it's just a useless hunk of metal. Nice try. I had a lovely time. That party took a lot out of me, Henry. Don't worry, I didn't come in here for sex. Thank you, dear. Why are you here? The next time you decide to throw a party, can you stick to your own crowd? Don't bother inviting people you think are my friends. But Henry, you don't have any friends. to replace 100-year-old track on the Rio Norte line. Some sections of this rail line, one of Taggart's most important, have fallen into disrepair over the last the four decades. The rails of the Rio Norte line have not been replaced in over 100 years. This marks years. the first time Reardon steel has been used this extensively in a major railroad construction project in the country. Yo, he's slow and safe, slow and safe. Get to the middle of that dock. Move the 
happen? Your speech at this dinner tonight better inspire confidence. The National Council of Metal Industries is questioning the structural integrity of Reardon Metal. I just hope you can defend Reardon Metal against Bertram Scudder. Scudder? You didn't tell me there would be other speakers there tonight. Well, we want to be objective and hear all signs, especially in front of the media. Objective? Did you read the hatchet job he did on Hank Reardon in his magazine? And why is there media at a private dinner? They're going to debate Scudder on the safety concerns of Reardon Metal. Driver, pull over. What are you doing? I don't need to defend my decision to use rear metal, but apparently you do. Good luck. How's it gonna look when we're not there to defend our own proposal? Taggart construction crews reached the foot of the Rockies this morning. Over 125 miles of track have been replaced in a little over a month, with still almost 200 miles more to go. This is Tawny Johnson, reporting from Granby, Colorado. He's off on that bit, bro. The State Science Institute is simply requesting that you stop production until the economy can stabilize. The answer is no. At a time of desperate steel shortages, we can't afford to allow the expansion of a company which produces too much and might replace companies which produce too little. That is how you create an unbalanced economy. Oh. Well, I tell you what. If you can answer me one simple question truthfully, I'll consider your request. Is Reardon Metal good or not? I'm authorized by the government to pay you a very generous sum for the rights to Reardon Metal. What would seem fair to you? Tell me if Reardon Metal is good or not, and I'll sell you the rights. I think that's a very selfish question to ask at a time of great economic uncertainty. Is Reardon Metal good or not? Answer the question, Doctor. The question of Reardon Metal being good or not is irrelevant. If Reardon Metal is not good, it's a physical danger to the public. If it is good, it's a social danger. If you have any proof that Reardon Metal poses a physical threat, show it to me. Otherwise, we're done here. Why is it so important for you to struggle for years, squeezing out meager gains, rather than accept a fortune for Reardon Metal? Because it's mine. Do you understand that concept? Mine. Why are you taking such a hard-lying position? I don't understand. I don't think you'll ever understand, Doctor. And Reardon Metal is good. making any more switches for you out of that unproven metal. Too many people think it's unsafe. What people? I just don't want any trouble. Herbert, look. You've been working with Reardon Metal for four months now. You know that it is the best material available. What's going on? I got a family. I need to make money. I'm trying to survive here. And you will. Continue manufacturing my mainline switches. There have been threats. Who is threatening you? The State Science Institute has issued a statement warning people against the use of rear metal. What are they saying exactly? It's what they're implying. It was issued under your name. Do you make it a habit of letting the Institute speak for you even when the words it uses are false? 
Mr. Stagger, it is public opinion that rear the metal is unsafe. What about the truth? Which truth? That rear and metal is the best material available on the market today. It is strong. It is safe. You know that. Please, have a seat. Please, consider my side, Miss Staggart. I work for the last center of science left on Earth. We do rely on public funding. Which do I sacrifice an excellent piece of smelting gold for the future of this institute? Ms. Staggart, please sit down. I had three brilliant students that I shared with another philosophy professor, Hugh Axton. Dr. Sadler, I don't understand what this has to do with what we... We even had a bet. Who would win over their hearts and minds first? One of them became a depraved playboy. His name was Francisco D'Anconi. I know who he is. The second, Ragnar Denishul, became a pirate, stealing from the state to get to the rich. And the third? The third one simply vanished. We were expecting such a magnificent future for them. I do wish you best of luck, Miss Taggart. completed 211 miles of replaced track using the new Reardon steel. According to studies, Reardon's new steel combined with the latest... This extensively in a major cars. railroad construction project in the country. Hello, Dagny. Mr. Wyatt. Hello. That was a big rig pile up a couple of weeks ago. Landslide closed down the uh, supply line for the workers on the rail. I thought we'd be down for a couple of weeks. We were back up and running in 24 hours. I figured someone knew how to manage a crisis up here. Nice job. Can't afford to fall behind. We have to get those rails in place before the first snows come. I underestimated you. Hey, Dagny. You ever want a job? I'll keep that in mind. I was watching you with the workers there. You look as at home there as you do in that big office of yours. I'm needed here. This is important. What you need is to replace that bridge. Not a chance. I have to be ready in six months. What if I told you I could have it made in three months and that it would last for centuries? Let me check my budget. I can make it happen. Now, I'm staying in town tonight. I was wondering if you'd like to join me for dinner. I can't. I have to get back to New York, but walk with me. Do you think it can be stopped? This new line or us? Both. What's going on, Eddie? Ben Neely's quit. Kellogg, McNamara, now Neely. Uh, that's not all, Dagny. Taggart Transcontinental stocks have plummeted because the State Science Institute has denounced Reardon Metal. Your family's railroad is in real trouble. Eddie. I think it's time to stand on our own. In order to save my family's business? 
I'm gonna have to abandon it. Good morning, Miss Taggart. Tiger Transcontinental is done. What are you talking about? We're finished. We can't stop and we can't go on. In a matter of weeks, our stock won't be trading anymore. You're being completely paranoid. Oren Boyle has assured me this pending legislation Here's what that... we're gonna do. And Jim, this is not a proposal. Just listen and accept. I'm gonna take a leave from Tiger Transcontinental. And start my own company. You're leaving? Shut up. You and the board are gonna transfer the Rio Norte line over to me. Our stock will go back up. I will act as my own contractor, I will get my own financing, and finish the line on time. And where are you going to get financing? That is not for you to worry about. Once we see how the reared metal rails perform, I will transfer the line back over to Tiger Transcontinental and return to my job. Okay. And what are you going to call this new line of yours, Dagny, because you're not dragging the family name through this? I won't allow it. The John Galt line. Well, now we know we've gone off the rails. That's the name. It's your disaster. And what's the plan if you fail? I go down alone. Tiger Transcontinental remains in your control. Two last things. What? First, I'm taking Eddie Willers oh, with no, me. No, 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 I need him here. Tough, you're gonna have to do your own work from now on. Second, keep your cronies in Washington off my back. Make sure I get all my permissions, grants, charters, authorizations, and any other political crap I need from those sons of bitches, otherwise no deal. I'll see what I can do. And one last warning, brother dear. I have never done anything to hurt a living creature in my entire life. But if you double-cross me in any way, I will destroy you. The money would mean nothing to you. You've wasted that much on senseless parties. You've wasted much more on the San Sebastian mines. I'm afraid I can't slug. Money's tight right now. Got too many expenses. Okay. So what do you want me to do, Frisco? Do you want me to beg? Because now I'm begging. <laughs> you don't know how. I thought that you of all people would understand. Then is it me that you want? Don't ask me such a thing, Dagny. If I ever meant anything to you, loan me the money that I need. I can't. What is this savior line gonna be called? The John Galt line. What? Because I am tired of hearing that name. It means quitting, giving up. And I am not giving up. I am not going to quit. I'm going to win. I'm sorry, Miss Taggart. Mr. Reardon, as Ms. president Tiger. of the John Gaunt line, I would like to commission from you a Reardon metal bridge for Wyatt Junction. Excellent. I'll start rolling the metal immediately. Aren't you curious as to how I'm able to finance this bridge? Okay, I'll bite. Alice Wyatt, Ted Nielsen, Lawrence Hammond, Kenneth Daniger. I'm not at 100% bond sold yet, but I am close. Hmm. There, I just made up the difference. 
I would never ask anyone to take a risk I wasn't willing to take myself. You're a good man, Hank Reardon. Can I show you something? Looks like an engine. Not like any engine I've ever seen. Where did you find this? Remember that motor company I was telling you about in Wisconsin? I did a little digging around and I found these. 20th Century Motor Corporation. It's a prototype for a new engine. Never went into production. I'm not even sure the thing works. Well, it's worth a look. Once the John Galt line is complete, I'd like to look into this further. Yes, sir. Care to help? Let me see what I can do. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Reardon, but there's an urgent call for you on line two. Hank Reardon? What? Find Mouch. What is it? The legislature just passed the Equalization of Opportunity Bill. So quickly, how is that even possible? I don't know. You know what this means? Nobody can own more than one company. We'll find a way to fix this. I'll sign away my other companies, but they are not getting my medal. What about Wyatt's Bridge? I gave my word. It'll be done on time and on budget. This is uh, just a technicality, Hank. Okay. I'll always consider the ore mine as yours. No. I either own the property or I don't. You can trust me. You know you'll always have as much ore as you need. I don't know. I've never given you any reason Look, to mistrust me. The mine is yours. If you intend to keep your word, then keep it. If you want to give me first call on the ore produced, fine. If you intend to double cross me, so be it. It's not fair, Hank. It wasn't me who passed the law. That is correct. The first train on the John Galt line will run July 22nd. Great news. Thank you, Dagny. My pleasure. Thank you. Dagny, this is uh, Mr. Brady, a delegate from the Union of Locomotive Engineers. You're busy. I'll be brief. We're not going to allow you to run that train on the John Galt line. Get out of here. You do not come into my office and tell me what you will or will not allow what me I to do. What I meant to say was that a committee has decided that allowing men to run your train on that untested metal would violate their human rights. Are you serious, Mr. Brady? You can't force men to go out and get killed just for profit. Put that in writing. That you want to stop your men from working and earning a wage. Miss Taggart, you don't understand. Oh, no, 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 I understand perfectly. You want me to provide the jobs, and you want to make it impossible for me to have any jobs to provide. You can do whatever you want with your men, Mr. Brady, but that train will run if I have to drive the damn thing myself because, Mr. Brady, if that bridge collapses, there won't be any railroad left in existence. But if it does not collapse, no member of your union will ever get a job on the John Galt line. Now, are you going to forbid your men to run that train? I never used the word forbid. I'm only stating that you cannot force anyone to take that run. I would never force a man to do anything. I'll ask for volunteers. Then it will be my problem, not yours. I advise them to refuse. Do what you want, Mr. Brady. But leave them the choice.
breaking news from Cheyenne, Wyoming, where the maiden run of the John Galt line is about to commence despite numerous warnings from the State Science Institute. 250 miles per hour all the way. The John Galt line's the future of rail travel, and we're going to prove it today. Miss Taggart, who is John Galt? We are. That's faster than any train has ever gone in this country. Colorado, the John Galt Line made a successful run over its new Reardon Metal Bridge. The controversial metal bridge held up perfectly despite strong warnings from the State Science Institute. 300 miles in less than 90 minutes. Was there ever any doubt? No, and because there was no doubt, I prepared a magnificent meal for the two of you. Did you see? I'm watching it now. John Gordon Line succeeds. It's gonna make Wyatt unstoppable. Now, what can be done? Don't you see? It's his own success that provides us the tools to bring him down. He's not only given us the rope, he's tied the knot. All we have to do is slip it over his head. This might work to our advantage.
like the Museo de las Mumias. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell both of you something. You know the Buena Esperanza Pass. Well, yeah. The Buena Esperanza Pass, that area has been dry for years. Ah, the conventional drilling, yes. There is an untapped reservoir of oil in those rocks, which is larger than any known reserve in the Saudi Peninsula. And underneath is an ocean of natural gas. Soon, everyone will be wanting to get on the bandwagon, and my friends, we are the band. I will drink to that. Here, here. To Colorado and the new Renaissance. And forget about the Stone Age and the Iron Age. Let's have a toast to the age of Reardon metal. And the John Galt line. Well, I can see that the market is opened in Hong Kong. Uh, I have some phone calls to make. You have been charming company, but I must excuse myself. There are several guest rooms upstairs. Help yourself. Thank you for everything. My pleasure, partner. Sir. Sir. My uh, casa has su casa and so on. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good to know there are men like Wyatt left in the world. I wish I could hold myself in the same esteem. I have a wife. And somewhere I'd have a company that's being pulled apart. Yet here we are. And all I want to do right now is kiss you. What's stopping you? Alice Wyatt? Yes. Could I have a moment of your time? At this hour? Who the hell are you? My name is familiar to you. He thanked us for a great time and said he's looking forward to the second renaissance. That's it. Odd. Mm-hmm. So, I was thinking. I thought we might take a trip. A little getaway. How scandalous. You're a married man. There you are, sir. 
Where are we going? You remember that folder I showed you with the strange engine? Yeah. I thought we might visit the 20th Century Motor Company in Wisconsin. When do we leave? It's a real mystery why the 20th Century Motor Company failed. It's no mystery. Bad ideas brought it down. Ideas? As I understand it, the company flattened the wage scale and still paid everyone according to their needs, not according to their contributions. Why all these stupid altruistic urges? It's not being charitable or fair. What is it with people today? So, after a short while, no surprise, the smartest managers and the better workers left the company. The hundreds of remaining staff couldn't handle it alone. Service dropped, the quality in their once great products was gone, and that was that. The 20th Century Motor Company went under. That's depressing. Looks like they just walked away. Not much here. It's too bad. I'd really like to figure out what happened here. Dagny. This is it. This is where they made the engine. You think it's here? Why would they leave all this stuff here? Some of this is incredibly sophisticated. It's unbelievable. Atmospheric vacuum. What? This motor uses the Casimir effect. It's a small particle accelerator. It throws small helium particles into heavier particles. Then this must be a secondary cooling system, probably designed to eliminate excess heat generated during the process. Exactly. And this creates a magnetic field in place long enough for the collapsing vacuum pressure to be captured. An engine that uses atmospheric vacuum to create static electricity. Now, does it say anywhere on this document who designed this thing? I don't see any names. We could get a list of the building's employees. We go to the town hall of records, we find the last owner of the factory, we track it back from there. Dagny, this could change the world. Factory has had a long line of owners, and unfortunately, the records are not complete. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, so I guess this is our starting point. I bought it in a bankruptcy sale from a guy named Eugene Lawson. <laughs> you got any idea how we might contact Mr. Lawson? He's in Washington now, at the uh, Bureau of Economic Planning and National Resources, I think. Well, my goal is social progress, universal prosperity. Welfare of the nation is my primary consideration, to which I wouldn't hesitate to sacrifice anyone's profit. Oh, well, Mr. Reardon, you must be awfully proud of your man, Mouch. He's doing big things in Colorado to help the nation, hmm? I no longer have interest in Mr. Mouch. Oh, I see. Well, that's, uh, that's too bad. Jed Starnes. Excuse me? Jed Starnes, he was an engineer at the 20th Century Motor Company. I hope that helps. My father was an evil man. But surely he must have mentioned something about work. A motor, perhaps. The chief engineer was William Hastings. He quit the day after we introduced the plan. You'll find him in Brandon, Wyoming. My husband died five years ago, Miss Taggart. Did he ever mention a motor he created? It was his young assistant. 
William always said he was a, oh, ahead of his time. He called him a genius. Do you know where we might be able to find that man today? Oh, I have no idea. He did keep in touch with a professor that he had at the Patrick Henry University. Hugh Axton was his name. I know that name. Do you know where he is? Well, Mr. Axton was rumored to have opened a roadside diner near Cheyenne. I gotta get back to my mills. Now? I have a business to run. We can't quit now, Hank. You're so close. Imagine what will happen if we find the inventor of that motor and get it up and running. Okay, give me a few days. I'll meet you in Colorado. Hi, Dagny. Hank, I'm back. Just want to see how you're doing. I'm great, Hank. I'm heading up to Axton's diner now. There's Eddie on the other line. I'll call you back. Hey, Eddie, what's up? The Union of Locomotive Engineers is demanding that all trains on the John Galt line be reduced from 100 to 60 miles an hour. And if we don't comply, as of right now, Wyoming, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah are not allowing any trains into Colorado. This is madness. It's not on, Dagny. Orem Boyle is campaigning for a bill that would limit the production of reared metal. Is that my sister on the phone? Talk to her. Where the hell are you? Do you have any idea what's happening here? Jim? This is your battle. I fought mine. They're your friends. You stop them. Dr. Axton, I was wondering if you remember a young engineer who worked at the 20th Century Motor Corporation about 10 years ago. He worked with a man named William Hastings. Could you tell me where to find him? Does this car get good mileage? Is he still alive? Is there anything that you can tell me? I've traveled a very long way to be here. Yeah. You got a long way to go, too. Excuse me. I have to be heading home. Dr. Axton, one more question. I need the name of your student who worked at 20th Century Motor Corporation. I know why you're here, Miss Taggart. Do you? The secret you're trying to solve, it's greater, and I mean much greater, than an engine that runs on atmospheric electricity. Good luck. I'm not going to give up trying to find the inventor of that motor. Oh, don't worry, Miss Taggart. He'll find you. I'm a mom for this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does my opinion really matter? The equalization of opportunity laws. Coffee? Yes. Sir, it just Anything else? It's Got rhubarb pie. Uh, no, no, Made it myself. Okay. No, I'm good. Thanks. Again. Broad spectrum of the Could you turn that up, please? Colorado is a rich state. It's quite unique. It's in a position where it can help its neighborhood needier states. So I, I, I think it's a good thing, yes. And, and it's fair to, to penalize one state. Please, you're not penalizing another state. You're helping another state. It's more of like a Robin Hood of taking from the rich and feeding the poor. I mean, rich people are getting richer. Poor people are getting poor. It's me. I heard about what Orrin Boyle is up to. Call me. Breaking news out of Wyatt Junction, Colorado. A major fire has erupted at the Wyatt oil fields. Reports are coming in that several explosions have already rocked the hillside. Our news team has captured this unedited footage on the scene. As you can see, the hillside behind me is completely engulfed in flames. Fire crews have been brought in from as far away as no. Denver County to help battle the blaze. As no. many as 40 acres... <laughs> My fellow Americans, Mr. Wesley Mouse. Thank you, thank you. As the new coordinator of the Bureau of Economic Planning and National Resources, I have issued a set of directives. I am placing a moratorium on all railroad bonds. Additionally, under my direction, all steel mills must produce steel at the same level and output and distribute it according to the needs of the people.
Furthermore, big companies will no longer be permitted to abandon their present states and move to wealthier states, like Colorado. Finally, a federal tax will be applied to the state of Colorado in order to equalize the national economy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to my town, James. John Galt. I live in a place we call Atlantis, and I think you'd fit in there. It's a place where heroes live, and where those who want to be heroes live. The government we have there respects each of us as individuals and as producers. Actually, beyond a few courthouses, there's not much of a government at all. Bottom line, Mr. Wyatt, if you're weary of a government that refuses to limit its power over you, and if you're ready at this moment to claim the moral right to your own life, then we should leave. And I'll take you there. I'll take you to Atlantis. This is Ellis Wyatt. I'm gone. Don't try to find me. You won't. I am on strike. <laughs>